real quick, what are your pronouns? Hello? Sorry, one second. You need to make sure that your uh, audio output is the is the um, is the correct one um, in Discord. Yeah, that, is that is that better? Is that better? I think I've yeah. Can you hear me? Feedback. Yes, I can hear you now. That's that's awesome. Okay. Um, pronouns. Yeah, it's an awesome shirt. My pronouns are he him. Okay. Um, at the moment, I'm okay. sort of questioning. Hell yeah! Well, if you want what, me to use what, different, if you changed your what, mind, I will change them. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to say about um, Kyle is, I'm not defending his take necessarily. Okay. What I wanted to say is that I think this is a this is a wider problem. This isn't just a problem with Kyle Kalinsky. It's not just a problem with shoe on head or people like that. I agree. But I think Skip it's a problem spoon. with leftists in general who are sort of you know new to the whole idea of leftism in a way uh what they don't understand is what they argue against when they argue against wokeness when they argue against uh liberal you know id poll mm -hmm. when they argue against things like that right they're not really arguing against the ideas necessarily but they, they are though against... they are they do make the that's the thing they their arguments are serially bad on this that's the problem that 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 drives me nuts. It's like, if if they understood the difference between the idea being bad and the and the the like un the like disingenuous sentiment being bad, they would make a better argument. But they don't. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they keep doing because... the same thing. So I just have to I just have well, to say it's like true because it's because they're not part of marginalized groups like like yourself like mm -hmm. me. I mean, yeah. I'm a bisexual. I mean, like I'm a bisexual man. We get erased as much as as much as anybody we get you mm -hmm. know basically shut down by people from the straight community and the gay community mm -hmm. you know I agree. like mm -hmm. i've had i've had women reject me for being bi i agree and i've had mm -hmm. men reject me for being bi for the same exact reason yes i agree but yeah. i think what they're angry about what pisses them off what gets uh -huh. them triggered basically i mean it's it sort of sets off a, an emotional reaction for them uh -huh. is it's corporations essentially taking the idea of being inclusive, mm -hmm. taking the idea of like, hey, you know, we're being diverse, we're including people yeah. from marginalized communities, and then using it as a, you know, as a marketing tactic, essentially. They're using it as advertising. And because it's so obvious and because it's so gauche and because it's so, you know, terrible for people like us, because it mm -hmm. misrepresents us so much. They think, oh, well, like people like Kyle Kalinske. Think, yeah, oh, but, well, but Kyle Kalinske is a voice it. for the left. He's like was involved, in, majorly involved in DSA. There's no excuse for him to be making bad arguments like this. Like I understand. I, I mean, besides just I fucked up. Okay, then take then retract the take. Say that you were wrong. And yes, I agree. Rainbow capitalism is a problem. But I get the feeling that like Kyle Kalinske and Shoe on Head are the type. And I'm not a hundred percent sure on this maybe on shoe on head but that they would be like anti things like no cops at pride no cops at pride is a direct response to the attempts of like rainbow capitalism and like uh to 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 bring cops into a part of of pride when pride was literally I, founded I've in never, response I've to never heard them say anything to that effect i'm not gonna lie i'd like i, right. I agree but do you see what i'm saying though that like there's a lot not. of there's a lot of people who should support things like that if they were actually just criticizing the sentiments, but you don't hear a whole lot of support for it. Instead, you hear them go on large screeds about, oh, the intersexual, nobody gets this. No normal person cares about any of this, except they do. And what they're doing is they are pushing right-wing talking points that are wrong, and they're helping push those forward as if the right needs any more help pushing those ideas forward. So like yeah, you you are correct. You are correct, especially in the case of Kyle Kalinsky. He does that, especially. I I don't know what his thing is with Jimmy Dore. Mm -hmm. He's I think it's it's an old friendship that he can't let go on yeah. some personal emotional level. He he still stands Jimmy Dore and like says that Jimmy Dore has the right ideas, even though Jimmy Dore is you know he's uh, a joke. He yes. lost, I used to like the guy. I really did. He was he was the he was the left's anger for a little while yeah. but he sort like i felt now that's me like, baby yeah if you're yeah now it's now it's now it's people like you and vosh and like you know it's 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 painful because you as a leftist you feel like you're unheard 
So mm-hmm. people like Jimmy Dore, they speak to you because they're getting angry about the same stuff that you are. Yeah, they're getting so righteously furious. I, I get that, and, and I promise, oh, I, yeah. I understand that completely. But Tucker Carlson does the exact same thing. And mm. he's just as disingenuous, and he's just as manipulative, and, he sh- and he's just I, I, as deserving of being called out. And I don't yeah. think that Kyle is equivalent to Tucker Carlson. However, I can't help Jimmy. but notice that that people like that Kyle and other people are r- basically laundering some of T- Tucker Carlson's points, and they're doing a very clumsy job with it. And that bothers me as somebody who has a lot to lose from those talking points gaining more ground. And even oh, more yeah. because this person is supposed to be aligned in my political movement, and they're pushing an they're pushing an ideology that is very dangerous to the things I care about the most. So it's bad yeah. enough when conservatives are out there, but I know conservatives hate trans people and would be happy if we all just died. Um, but yeah. when I see leftists yeah, they're, they're laundering right. Shit. Yeah, but when I see left leftists or supposed left leaning figures laundering right wing talking points that essentially argue the exact same thing, which is that, yeah, but the trans people, the black people, the immigrants, they're really inconvenient for the class struggle. So why don't we put you all on the back burner while we handle this class struggle thing, and then we'll get to you later? And that is the argument. Yeah. No, there is no yeah. that is I, the argument I, that was just I think, made. I think what Kyle gets wrong here in particular. And Jimmy Dore as well, and yeah. other people of that ilk. You know, I, I even Shank Yuga, like you know, like people of that sort of persuasion. The people from it's weird. Like it seems like it's such a short space of time, but there is a new school and an old school left in that in, online at least. You know, there's a there's a new school of people like yourself yeah. and people like, you know, uh, like Vosh and like, you know, uh, the streamer community in particular has seemed to have taken the ball and ran with it on this. Well, good. Uh, I mean, and here's the thing. Yeah. My goal is that by the time I'm the old school, I hope that I will have, uh, well, I like to think that I have adopted an adaptive worldview that will be able to change as times change. And as yeah. I learn new things, and I yeah. also will you're encourage more, my followers to do so adaptive in the way that you work. And that's a great thing. It really is. But what the what the old school lefties like Kyle and Jimmy and to a lesser extent, the Young Turks, they're sort of stuck in this idea of, well, you know, they're, they're stuck in this idea of, well, liberalism in general is a distraction. They they equate all identity politics as liberalism, which is not the case. Which is the hilarious is, because the TYT is their union busters. So, like, what the fuck are they talking about? This is, okay, and this is where I get to the point where I'm just like, this is why I am desperately trying to instill a sense of skepticism in my audience, and I hope that other people will do so as well. Because the problem with me is that there are a fuckload of people who are basically just really bad, like, con men. I don't want to call them grifters. Like, I think that they believe in some of the things, in the the things that they say. It, it does come up, up. It, it's but close it's like to the surface, you when know? you get to the level of hypocrisy where you're like representing yourself as like a leftist movement, but you union bust your own union movement. That's like 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 that's pretty bad. When you get to the point where you say you're a leftist and you're like a, a major found like not founding. I don't know if he was founding, but he's a major, major supporter of like DSA and a lot of these like uh like democratic well, the, the, the thing is what well, the thing they founded was Justice Democrats, which yeah, Justice to be Democrats, fair, has has done some good. Yeah, you of know? course. But, but once you, know, you once you if you find it's... don't you find something a little bit weird about founding Justice Democrats and then two we, year two years later four years later going on a giant rant about how intersectionality nobody except for idiot well then you failed at that you were supposed What's to that? be the I, one What's I that? think I think Kyle in particular it, he's an, he's a very emotional guy I think what he has done especially because like uh, the reason he left Justice Democrats was because uh shank was getting pilloried basically over old republican tweets of his and old republican takes which he doesn't really believe oh, anymore but he was yeah getting but there was a lot more than just that though like shank didn't do a very good job in his run like Please, shank, yeah, and people didn't. people he's don't terrible. trust he's not a good politician he's not that's, a good politician yeah. he fucked up he made a bunch of dumbass arguments that made him look like a dumb right-wing shithead he then was he was actively union busting the tyt union yeah, yeah, at the like, same time as he was running for yeah. Congress for it. Like, I, get it I get it, I get it, I get not liking people wanting to cancel, but like, 
isn't it? Is it just? I feel like it says something about your principles if your your buddy gets canceled or something, and then you decide to throw out intersectionality as a concept. Yeah, he yeah. did. And also, yeah, of course, did, yeah. Kyle, did, Kyle has uh, a bit of a vested interest in the old tweet business with the listen, yeah. old Kyle <laughs> tweets, not the best. There's, there's old Kyle. That uh, what's that? What's that? Um, what's that Twitter thing? Like um, old Kyle Kalinsky tweets. Yeah, that it's it's a very funny way of taking the piss because the guy kind of deserved it from back yeah. then. Like seriously, what the fuck was he on about? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he was he was he was just talking bullshit. But, but yeah. these are still people who I think can be brought around with, um, if, if say, for example, it wasn't me talking to you like mm -hmm. some nobody from nowhere. If it was me, if it was Kyle Kalinske talking mm -hmm. to you right now, I think you'd have an opportunity to bring him around. On oh, I would love to talk to him about it, but like, I don't, but I can't just stroll in and ask people for a talk. What, like people think that I'm like some kind of big influential creator. I'm like, I have a lot of viewers today, which is really super pog, by the way, like, and subscribe, please. Um, but, Ooh. but I'm not like, I'm not at that point. And like, the reality is like when you put out a take publicly, people are going to respond to it. So I'm going to respond I, to a take that's going viral. Like, so yeah, but of course, like I said, multiple times in this segment, while I'm very frustrated about the sentiment and I'm going to go hard on it, I don't think that like Kyle is some like irredeemable racist or anything like that. I just think okay. that if, if I, I think if I may for a second, can yeah. I, can I speak out? Like if this gets clipped at uh -huh. all, can I like say to Kyle as like a long time fan of the guy, like I've been a fan of his since like you know 2000, 2011, 2012. Kyle, like, come talk to some of these lefty streamers. Like, you you kind that this is the movement you built. Mm -hmm. This is the movement you wanted to build. Come talk to people. Come talk to Vosh. Come talk to you. Yeah. Come talk to Demon Mama. Like, come talk Please. to people who have sway over the young left, which is rising up in support of ideas that you championed long ago yeah. you know like america still does I'm, I'm british as you can obviously tell but you know america still doesn't have universal health care like you still don't have these amazing things that we in europe take for granted and if you could like uh, crystal uh, people in the chat are mentioning crystal ball crystal yeah. ball is like her heart's in the right place she just can't make the arguments against right wing people her appearance on Joe Rogan was really depressing. I didn't even see that. Uh, her and Saga's, like, um, basically it was oh, Joe oh, Rogan. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that now. I remember that now. I I, for I totally forgot she was even there because Saga talked for so much of it. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. Saga, Saga and Joe ran over her because she didn't Completely. have the arguments necessary to make them question things and make them question why, like, um, there was the bit about what was it it was um it was the it was the george floyd protest fuck mm -hmm. like damn like and joe rogan and and saga were saying like oh well we just need to restore order we need yeah. to restore peace which is like fascist rhetoric <laughs> like yeah it was fascist. like it was <laughs> it was the law and order shit and it was and crystal was just like well i i think we shouldn't do that like what i would what I was screaming at the screen was like, hey, look, oh yeah, bring the army into Oregon. Like, dude, what do you think the army's going to do except create more violence in that situation? They're going to shoot people. Yeah, that's It's, it's the army. It's what they're trained to do. Yeah. As soon as something twitchy happens, they're going to shoot some people, and that's going to fuck everything up. You don't want that. What you want is that if the National Guard coming in in a perfect situation, they would restore order and then have there would be a peaceful discussion. That's not going to happen. Yeah, the police are going to get involved. It's going to be a huge clusterfuck, and people are going to die. I mean, what actually and what ended up happening when when the feds got involved in Portland was instantaneously we got black baggings. We got just extrajudicial yeah, exactly. arrests. It was ridiculous. Exactly. It, yeah. it, it, it was insane watching that from over here because, like, yeah. you know, the British police. It was are insane not watching it from one hour and a half away from Portland and in one uh, of the other hot spots. 
10 minutes like i live like literally like 10 to 15 minutes away from where chaz was i know like i I covered this shit it was wild my house got buzzed by fucking military helicopters as a part of their uh riot suppression uh movement that that must have been fucking scary it was like i've talked about it openly on here before like i literally had to stop streaming for a while because i couldn't i couldn't handle covering it anymore because it was so ridiculous Mm. Uh, we got put in my town didn't have any major protests in it because i live in like a town just outside of the main city and but our city got put on a uh 8 8, 8 p.m mandatory police enforced curfew they would ticket you Ooh. for 350 dollars if you were out past 8 p.m in the middle of summer in a place where there were no protests just because they were trying to suppress protesters from going into town really bad 850 dollars like that's that's like yeah. the proof Three, of um, yeah. what, what's yeah. that what's what's that line sorry i'm talking over you but uh, th- $850 is proof of that line that uh, fines are just a tax on the poor. That's, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, ta- it's like a, it lets, it, it means that it means it's a, it's a fee for doing a crime for rich people. Rich people can go do it yeah. if they want to pay the fee. And yeah, then everybody like if you else murder just... somebody, you can get on bail for like half a million and you're like, well, well who gives a fuck? You know, yeah. like I've got 8 billion. I don't care. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to, you I, don't I... need to go protest if you're not being currently oppressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, but what, see, this is the really thing want. to like to sort of wrap it back to the original topic, like because I do have to um, I do have to head out here real soon because we're about to go on to the um, Dylan Burns uh, I know, show. That's cool. It's been really fun talking to you. Yeah, honestly. likewise, great, likewise. It's great watching. Well, thank you. you know? I appreciate that, and I hope I hope Kyle Kalinsky will take your advice. I would love to sit down and talk with him again. I think that like. I, I really believe there's a lot of people in that fact. Now, there are some people I don't think are good faith actors. I don't particularly think that Peter Coffin is like a good faith actor. Um, no, I do Peter think... Coffin has obviously shot his wad on that a long time ago. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah know, for sure. It was Ash that kind of brought him back to sanity. I yeah, think there was maybe. A, I don't know. <laughs> we'll say about that. I don't know. But uh... Ash, Ash, is, Ash is weird in her own way, but she at least sort of, you know, kept him at least vaguely on the ground. Yeah. You know? Um. I mean, I, I think... Uh oh, that's actually Alexa, the problem. All right, information that I don't have. Please well, tell listen, me. Well, nah, listen, nothing public. All right, listen. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, but here we go. So uh, the the thing that I will say is that like I I think there are good faith actors. I really personally, I've 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 done like one show with Shu where uh, we did like play we played like Among Us together, and that was really fun. Oh, um, and I and and in everything I've seen, I do believe Shu to be an honest act actor like i i think that she's being genuine about about the things she believes i think sometimes i don't agree with all of her takes in fact i really do, strongly as as gets. what's that she was a very honest person sort of by like default so she's but she's she spent a lot of time with people who believe stuff that's completely counter to you know completely counter to facts and yeah. society and i don't think that's like a fault of her part necessarily mm-hmm. it's just a thing that she's you know she's a very eloquent talker so she spent well, a lot of time getting invested yeah. in like other talkers for the I, right i know, do basically. also think though that like like i think shu has a a populist streak that sometimes gives her a blind spot to um legitimate criticisms of like yeah populism right like because yeah. uh and and i think some of that comes from just like a desire to you know quote unquote win people over when i don't really think that winning people over is that is is like like winning people over from the right is actually a really hard thing to do and it's actually people yeah. from who are just sort of like politically uninterested or don't know what they believe that i think are the ones we really need to be focusing on by and large um but like yeah, I think that that idea yeah. of like the sort of like adherence to populism as an idea, and like I think that yeah. you personally, and this is this is me doing armchair, you know, streamer psychology, which is just like it seems to me like the idea. I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a quali- well technically sort of qualified psychologist, so I well. can critique you on this if you're being wrong. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm just I'm I'm being a little goofy, but like the idea is that Different. like I I think that I think that Shu takes her um her populist credentials very seriously like on a personal level like that identity is very strong to her and i think sometimes that leads her to um to have some takes that that i think are really detrimental in the long run and don't necessarily seem bad um but but can be if they're not implemented correctly and i think that's i think the same way about about kyle kolinsky as well if I, if I can say like about both of them you're you're entirely correct what they have done is they've taken um, uh, Vosch, Vosch said something very, very 
I keep saying his fucking name wrong because of Sargon of a cat. I hate Vosh? myself for doing this. <laughs> but, I think I thought I said it correctly. Bosh, Bosh, Bosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what he's what he said um, about leftism isn't your social group. Uh-huh. Leftism isn't your club. It's uh-huh. not. A, it's not a personal thing. It's it's a political movement. Yeah. That is entirely correct. And what's happened is, uh, people like Kyle Kalinsky and Sean Head, who've been involved in politics for a very long time, they have made their identity part of their politics. And yeah. you can't really do that because it blinds you to objective truth. It blinds you to the fact that there are marginalized groups who you might not have considered. There are, you know, because I, I hate to say this to uh, to someone who's trans, but I was. Um, the only contact I ever had with mm-hmm. trans people for a long time, I live in a, quite a rural community in England. Uh, a lot of the contact I had with trans people was as part of my job in the mental health system. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was natural for me to gatekeep to, you know, that psychiatric gatekeeping thing yeah. was part of me for a while. Well, I mean, that was the, it, that was the, I mean, that was, that's part of the problem of, well, it look, is. that's another conversation entirely, but it, it, yeah, especially in England, it's it's yeah. awful. There's, it's awful over here. The gatekeeping is like was like baked in intentionally. Like like there's it's really complicated. I, again, I could talk about yeah. that for hours. We could gender, talk about that gender dysphoria time. was medicalized just like um, homosexuality was back in the day, yeah. and, and worse so, I would argue in some ways. Um, yeah, in, in that, I mean, like, the only people I met who were trans were people with personality disorders on top of it. And I thought for a long time that they were conflated in some way, that they were comorbid, they were together, which they're not. You know, that's not true. It took me a long ass fucking. <laughs> you're doing the shush motion. <laughs> listen, yeah, as somebody, I, as a trans woman with a personality disorder, listen. Just... Hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with having a personality I know, I know. disorder. I, that personality a disorder is a result of stuff that happened to you. It's not to do with you. The personality disorder is to do with stuff that mm-hmm. that was done to you by other people, and often because no you're trans or because you're queer. Like yes. it's just how it goes. But yes, I, I I largely agree with you. I I think that um, there's a lot of room for improvement on this. I just really wish that I I really wish that uh, that they had they were they would improve right now and not you know the only way to get there is to yeah. push back on these you ideas. Wish, yeah, you wish Kyle Shu people like that would get into a room and then you could. Like, just say to them, hey, guys, like, at the end of the day, this class stuff that yeah. you've been awakened to in your life when it comes to economics, you know, the, the real solution to this is to unify with people who are marginalized elsewhere, people who are marginalized in terms of social factors, not just economic factors, people who are... Um, Lona Box did a great video yeah. about intersectionality in the UK, um, about how uh, unions, uh, miners' unions in the 80s, unified with um, gay rights activists in London. Mm-hmm. And despite the fact that they were entirely different, they're from entirely different social backgrounds, yep. they unified together and they created, uh, they, they were the reason that the Labour Party in the UK accepted gay rights accepted trans well not trans rights necessarily back then because oh god history yeah but well look i have to get going over to this panel but it was wonderful talking with you and i'm sure we'll probably talk again in the future at a call-in stream or something like that we can go extensively into some of these topics i hope so like um do you mind if i like shout out myself like go for it Yeah. yeah please uh hi i'm psychosocialism i've made a couple of youtube videos about like basically i'm trying to teach psychology with memes like i'm giving away my psych degree for free so mm-hmm. i've done like i've not done much yet but if you want to check me out it's psychosocialism on youtube and uh i've done a couple of videos and there's one on guilt and shame it's it's all right like <laughs> i hate promoting oh, don't undersell myself. yourself all right go check out psychosocialism and uh, we'll talk again sometime all right Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Bye for now.